Hi guys, today we are going to be talking about The Burning God by R.F. Crank and it's the last one in the trilogy and I have to say, what an ending. The ending is very faithful to the journey that we have been doing since the first book and I have to be honest here and say that I ended the book this morning and I had to let it sit down until, you know, everything was more or less more... Yeah, because when you end the book, it's like, what? And yeah, it all makes so much sense and it all hurts so much and, you know, and yeah, I mean, it's an amazing book. Uh, in this one, we're going to have more presence of the gods and the shamans and... I think that it's a brilliant testament of what the author has done in the previous books, that by the time that we have different shamans and we have the trifecta walking around and all of that, it all makes perfect sense. It's this big suspension of disbelief in which we believe that this world can be possible, that the gods can interact in the human world through a human host, and you believe everything. And not once I was there thinking, oh my god, that's a bit too much. Never. There is even one moment that's... I'm not going to make any spoilers. I'm only going to say that it's related to a, dra to a dragon in which I was like, oh my god. But I believe that. And as I say for me, that's a brilliant testament of the world that F. Kwan has done in the, in, the, in the whole journey. That when you come to certain points in the story, you don't doubt that these things are really happening and that everything is truly real. Because it feels like this is like a China story and you believe that there was a time in which shamans were walking among the soldiers and, you know, it, you believe that this world exists. And that's amazing. I have to say that um, for me this book was amazing. We're going to have more uh, wars and more guerrillas and... We are going to have like aerial wars with uh, big dirigibles, uh, throwing bombs and all of that. And I wonder how many books and how many studies the author has had to read in order to compose all these very raw, cruel and realistic wars that we have been reading since the first book. In the first one, if I remember correctly, it was like uh, guerrilla wars. In the second one, it was the Navy. And in this one, we have like aircraft. And she has made an amazing job of depicting the three types of wars and, you know, that the different strategies and different things that you have to encounter to fight against them. And for me, what I adore about these books is that the author doesn't pull her punches when she's talking about uh, post-traumatic post stress syndrome or when she's reflecting what it's like to see the world through the eyes of the soldier and... In this case, uh, Rin, who's a general, has going to. She has. Uh, she's in that position in which she's obsessed with having power. Uh, she's obsessed with with winning the war, and she begins to see soldiers as a means to an end. She um, tells more than one in the book that she uh, cannot see people as people. She sees them as parts moving that she has to stop, or uh, she doesn't linger too much in the fact that she's killing people because if she does, she's not going to be able to to keep on killing people. And I think the book does a great job of showing to what people are reduced in a war. Uh, they are paused away in orders, they are like moving pieces of a clockwork and never seen as human beings and it, it, it makes you reflect a lot. And also I love how the things that they do affect them in different ways depending on what they expect or want from this world. Kitai wants peace, he wants all of this to be over, he wants to help uh, reign, reign in the phoenix. Rin wants to burn everything. Um, Benka wants to bench all the girls that have been sexually abused. Neza, what Neza wants, it's something that I'm not going to spoil for you, but you know, every one of them sees the world in a different way. So they react differently and how it affects them is different too. And as I say, we're going to have members of the old defector. We are going to have the Impress. We are going to have uh, the Gatekeeper. I love seeing him again, again, uh, again because he's a character that I did enjoy seeing in the first two books. And uh, yeah, maybe we're going to see the whole effect again. Maybe, I don't know. But what I did love were the compositions that are made in the book between the old trifecta and the one that's uh, in the works now. Merely this one, Rin, Kitai and Neza. And I love all the parallelisms and all the realizations that you come to at the end of the book about 
uh, absolute power uh, can destroy you one more. You forget to think about the people as people. You think as everyone is a rival to you and you want to eradicate everything and you want the, to let the whole world burn and you end up alone. I love that Rin has the reflections inside her head and I think that uh, she's not a perfect character and I think that I love her more because of that because if you had the power of a god inside you, a god that can, you know, unleash havoc or that can help you get vengeance for the wrongdoings that have been done to you, if you had um, this amazing quantity of fire at your hands, what would you do? If you were put into her situation in which she has always been abused, uh, she was always been labeled different, uh, dumber, uh, you know, and she's in that position in which she can make the whole world kneel, even the ones that wanted to kill her. She's 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 an amazing character in that way that shows you, you know, and makes you think that sometimes when you are trying to save the world and you can end up being the very thing that you never wanted to be, you know. And yeah, I mean, I can be talking about this book like forever. I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't want to make any spoilers. But if you like the first two, you're going to love this one. I mean, I was quite afraid of reading it uh, for mainly two reasons. I knew it would rip my heart out. And also I knew it would be goodbye to this world. And no more Rin, no more Kitai, no more Shamans, no more Nessa. And I didn't know if I was prepared for it. And um, yeah, it has been sitting on my shelf since it came out and yeah, I had to tackle with it. And I have to say that, as I say at the beginning, I love what the author has done here. And she has said that she has another work, another book in the works about, uh, I think it's called Babel. And yeah, it's already new as of, as of now. But yeah, maybe when the review publishes, we will know more about it because I'm going to program this review but yeah uh pick these books up because they are amazing they make you think about different kinds of things about war about a power about uh, the relationship between religion power and people uh, about discrimination uh, about people who colonize other places and want to eradicate what they find there in order to have like copycats of themselves about you know it's, it's about uh, slavery it's about uh, human rights it's about uh, not judging people because of the color of the skin or what they believe in. Uh, it's about, you know, it's about surviving. Um, and it's an amazing work. So thank you for watching. Bye.